previous lectures we have discussed about the methods for detection and quantification of radioactivity. We have discussed three methods, one based on ionization of gases where GM counters are utilized, second one on the based on the excitation of solutions and solids where we have discussed about solid and liquid scintillation counters and third one that is based upon the exposure to photographic emulsion that is auto radiography. All three methods have particular applications and they could be utilized as per the requirement of, uh, of in particular application. Now, in this lecture we are going to uh, extend our discussion on radioactivity and we are going to discuss about different applications of radioisotope technique and the safety aspects involved here. Now, before we go into that let us first discuss this one more technique which is very important and uh, it is a very sensitive and versatile technique that is radio immunoassay. And this technique is quite widely used in, uh, in both research and diagnostics. Now, this technique uh, as it utilizes radio isotopes this will certainly require to uh, follow certain precautions as well as you have to take license to use the radio isotopes. Uh, another technique which has kind of replaced radio immunoassays ELISA which we will be discussing in some other section. So, radio immunoassay is a very sensitive in vitro assay used to measure concentration of antigens by the use of antibodies. Now, this could be like say you would like to determine hormone levels in the blood or certain other analyte in the blood then if you have the suitable antibodies for that you can use it for assaying that particular substance. Now, this technique has revolutionized research and clinical practices in many areas for example, blood banking in diagnosis of allergies say in field of endocrinology and so on. So, it has really revolutionized lot of different areas. Uh, it is a very simple technique, a very simple methodology is followed here to perform the assay. So, what is done is I uh, will show you the figure also, but just we will discuss little bit before that. Uh, what is done is a known quantity of antigen is made radioactive by labeling it with mostly uh, gamma radioactive isotope of iodine which is attached to tyrosine. Now, the radio labeled antigen is mixed with known amount of first antibody uh, for that antigen, so that they bind to one another. So, what you have is a radio labeled bound antigen to first antibody. Then a sample of serum or patient or, or from a particular patient containing unknown quantity of the same antigen will be taken and it will be added and this is unlabeled antigen. So, we can call it cold antigen or unlabeled antigen. Now, what will happen is the unlabeled antigen will compete with the radio labeled or we call it hot antigen for antibody binding site and this will uh, certainly lead uh, to at increasing concentration of unlabeled anti antigen. Uh, what will happen is that increasing amount of radioactive antigen will be displaced from the antibody molecules and thereby reducing the ratio of antibody uh, bound radio labeled antigen to free radio labeled antigen. So, what you will are going to see in the solution that you have lot of free radio labeled antigen because it has been replaced by the cold antigen. Now, antibody bound antigen is separated from the free antigen in the supernatant and radioactivity of each is measured using a gamma counter. So, you can uh, like first thing to be done is you have to have known standards and a binding curve can be generated which allows the antigen amount in the patient's serum to be derived as we do it for many other assays. So, this is a very simple methodology which is utilized in radio amino assay. Now, to explain that through a figure if you see on your screen if you can see here there is a antibody here and there is a red 
a colored antigen bound to that that is a radio labeled antigen. Now after radio labeled antigen you have bound it then that is the first we call it first antibody and this is hot antigen in terms of it is radio labeled antigen. Now what you do is you add uh, uh, unlabeled or cold antigen which is uh, we have negative here shown. Now uh, this one as the uh, concentration is higher or increasing they will compete for the same site actually because they are the same antigen and so some of the antigens that is radio labeled antigen will be replaced in here and then what will happen that the free radio labeled antigen then could be so radioactivity of supernatant will be equal, equivalent to free antigen and uh, radioactivity of precipitate will be bound antigen. So, you will you can measure the uh, radioactivity in free uh, of free antigen and then ratio can be taken and finally and this one here which is shown here is the second antibody uh, uh, which binds to the first antibody. So, this way you can calculate the ratio and a standard curve can be drawn and through which you can uh, through the standard curve you can uh, determine the uh, the uh, concentration of unknown antigen. So, that that could be done without any problem. So, that is the very simple method of radio immunoassay. Now, uh, this is like I said it is very sensitive technique quite used quite a lot in research as well as clinical practices, uh, but ELISA has kind of replaced it. Um, uh, now, when you have done radio immunoassay, assay, uh, the one uh, thing which has to be done is separating the bound uh, antigen from free antigen and there are several ways to do that. You can uh, precipitate the antigen antibody complex by adding second antibody directed against the first like uh, a rabbit uh, antibody can be used by adding an anti rabbit anti serum. Uh, then antigen specific antibody can be coupled to particles like cephadex and by centrifugation they can be separated. Uh, radio amino acid is widely used because of its great sensitivity, but will certainly have certain disadvantages. Uh, for example, uh, both uh, iodine 125 or 131 emit radiation uh, that require special counting equipment. Now, many times body can concentrate iodine atoms which can be radioactive or not in thyroid gland where they are incorporated in where uh, uh, in thyroxine actually. Uh, but uh, 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 aside beside these disadvantages despite these uh, disadvantages there are various applications which have been uh, like uh, like for say hormone label in the blood uh, it can be it could be very useful uh, for the presence of say hepatitis B surface antigen uh, in donated blood that could be in blood banking it could be uh, analyzed. Uh, anti DNA antibodies could be utilized in systemic lupus um, erythromatosis uh, like SLE. Uh, so, a lot of different applications could be there for radio immuno assay. So, this is like a very uh, sensitive and specific technique uh, and which could be used with uh, radio isotopes. All right, so now we will move on to the applications of radio isotopes. There are many applications of radio isotope technique and radio isotopes are used in many different fields which include biological sciences as well as other uh, fields which even include like humanities and arts like we will see how uh, uh, that is uh, applied in there. So, let us start with the radio isotopes in biological sciences. What are uh, different applications of these in biological sciences? Now, one is biochemical analysis. Say in biochemical in analysis you can detect presence or absence of some radioactive material when they exist in low concentration. So, radioisotopes can be used to label molecules of biological samples in vitro that is out of the body and thus could be used to determine constituents of blood, serum, urine, hormones, uh, antigens and many drugs uh, by use of associated radioisotopes. So, you can have uh, uh, like radio immuno assay could be utilized to determine these like we have discussed earlier. So, biochemical analysis requires or can be uh, can use different kinds of radio isotopes. Then lot of different aspects of metabolism where research is going on in metabolism radio isotopes could be utilized. 
For example, radioisotopes are frequently used for tracing metabolic pathways. It involves adding a radioactive substrate, now then extracting and separating products from samples taken at various times. Uh, one example could be to predict the fate of individual carbon atom say 14 C uh, in acetate through the TCA or Krebs cycle. Now, this method have been developed to isolate the intermediates and know the distribution of carbon within each intermediate. Uh, another example could be evaluating pathways of say glucose catabolism. Now, to know the relative contribution of glycolysis followed by Krebs cycle together with the pentose phosphate pathway, both pathways involve complete oxidation of glucose to CO2. But the origin of the CO2 in terms of the 6 carbon atom of glucose is different, so that could be ascertained. So, a uh, lot of like in different investigative aspects of metabolism, this could be utilized. Uh, then you can determine metabolic turnover uh, number or how many times this takes place actually. So, radioisotopes provide a convenient method of ascertaining turnover times for particular compounds. Example, turnover of proteins can be followed by injecting a radioactive amino acid of choice and the radioactivity in the organ or tissue of interest it is determined at different time intervals. Then you can study absorption, accumulation and translocation of particular analyte. So, radioisotopes are frequently used to study the mechanism and rates of absorption, accumulation and translocation of inorganic and organic compounds in both plants and animals. So, this is another important application of radioisotope. Uh, in research in molecular biology techniques, uh, radioisotopes are used quite a lot. Uh, the use of radioisotopes has been critical, I would say, in advancement of molecular biology leading to genetic manipulation. The radioisotopes have been used in many procedures including DNA and RNA sequencing, DNA replication, transcription studies, synthesis of cDNA uh, recombinant DNA technology and several other studies. So, in molecular biology this has really uh, helped in understanding lot of different mechanisms and procedures. In ecological studies, radioisotopes could be used. For example, radio tracers can be used for studying migratory pattern and behavior pattern of many animals. Uh, then examination of food chains where the primary uh, producers can be made radioactive and the path of the radioactivity followed throughout the resulting food chain. So, this is another important application of radioisotopes. Radioisotopes could be utilized for sterilization of food and equipment. Now, very strong gamma emitters are widely used for steri sterilization of pre-packed foods such as milk and meats uh, by uh, irradiation. Normally, uh, it could be uh, cobalt 60 or 137 cesium is used for irradiation. Care needs to be taken to ensure that food product is not affected and so the doses are reduced or has to be standardized. Now, food spoilage can be reduced to a great extent by this and uh, it makes it more safer and fresh for longer time. Uh, then also these things could be uh, these isotopes could be radioisotopes could be utilized for sterilization of plastic disposal, uh, disposable equipment such as petri dishes and syringes and in sterilization of drugs that are administered by injection. Uh, so, these uh, this is like quite good or quite important in sterilization of food and equipment. Uh, another uh, important application could be generating mutagens. Radioisotopes may cause mutations particularly in microorganisms and in various microbiological studies mutants are desired or desirable especially in industrial microbiology. So, radioisotopes could be used for mutagenesis and for development of a new strain of a microorganism that could produce give higher yields or a desired product uh, which could be a microbial product. Uh, radioisotopes are widely used in lot of analytical applications. Uh, for example, in enzyme and ligand binding studies. 
to study mechanism of enzyme action ligand binding studies could be done through radio tracer method. The method is uh, more expensive, but provides a very high degree of sensitivity. Uh, then isotope dilution analysis could be done like many compounds in living organisms, which cannot be assayed because of presence of low amounts and in mixtures of several compounds can be assayed by this particular method. Only thing is that you should have a radioactive form of compound, uh, it should be available. Now, in isotope dilution analysis, what it provides is convenient and accurate, ma accurate method to solve this problem and avoid necessity of quantitative isolation. The technique is widely used say for uh, studies on trace elements. For example, to measure amount of say iron in a protein preparation, 59 Fe is mixed with the protein and a sample of iron is subsequently isolated and assayed for total iron and radioactivity is determined. So, this way uh, you can determine very small amounts of uh, different uh, compounds. Uh, then another very important uh, and uh, you must have heard about this is radio dating. You must have heard about that okay, one fossil has been found which uh, is so uh, like a million years old or thousands of years old. So, radio dating or dating is the method of determining the age of an object, which could be usually rocks, it could be fossils, sediments, etcetera. On the basis of constant, now this is done on the basis of concentration of a particular radioisotope present in the sample. Here it is assumed that radioisotopes begin to decay at the time of fossilization or deposition. Now, but by determining the amount of radioisotope remaining or amount of decay products, and from the knowledge of half life of radioisotopes, it is possible to date the sample. So, radiocarbon dating is one such type of radio uh, dating method. Now, for uh, say longer uh, periods, uranium 238 or uranium 235 could be used, uh, which has half life of around 4.5 billion years and decays to lead 206, as we have discussed in earlier section. So, if this is present in a rock and by uh, how many high half life it has gone through, you can determine the age of the rock. For short term dating, 14 C is widely used. For long term dating, uh, uranium could be uh, used actually. So, uh, radio dating is a very important uh, part of radioisotope technique. There could be, uh, there are a lot of applications of radioisotopes in agriculture field also. Uh, for producing high yielding crop seeds and speed up the process of developing superior agricultural products, radioisotopes could be used. Now, radiation pellets are used in grain elevators to kill insects and rodents. Insect control is very important application uh, for pest populations are drastically reduced and in some cases eliminated by exposing the male insects to sterilization. So, they will have no offsprings and thus will be reducing in population. Uh, tracer technique is used to study the rate and direction of movement of an element in a plant radioisotopes in plants. Radioisotopes are used for determining the function of fertilizer in different plants and also for reducing the consumption of fertilizers. So, you can see that radioisotopes also have application in agricultural field. Now, there are very uh, like radioisotopes are widely used in the field of medicine. Uh, there are whole lot of applications in the field of medicine right from diagnostics to uh, detection to cure of diseases. Uh, one of the main field which is uh, nuclear medicine is a very prominent field in the medical medical sciences. Now, nuclear medicine is a branch of medicine that uses radiation to provide information about the functioning of a person's specific organs or to treat a disease. Now, this information can be utilized by physician to make a quick and accurate diagnosis of patient's illness. For example, thyroid, bones, bones, heart, liver and many other organs can be easily damaged and disorders in their function can thus be revealed through this technique. Radiations can be used to treat diseased organs or tumors as well. Nuclear medicine was developed in 1950s by the physicians with an 
endocrine emphasis initially using I131 to diagnose and then treat thyroid diseases. In recent years, a uh, lot of advancement has taken like for example, uh, tomography like CT, oblique PET, PET or positron emission tomography procedures have been established. So, a lot of advancement is taken in this place. Now, this radioisotope technique could be used for diagnosis, nuclear imaging and uh, other uh, applications like for example, uh, radioactive tracer, tracers which emit radiations from within the body could be used. Now, tracers should have short half lives to minimize the radiation dose to the patient and can be given by injection, inhalation or inhalation orally or orally. So, they can be given by either injection, inhalation or they can be given orally. Uh, nuclear imaging is another field in here to evaluate like for example, brain functions or other organs. Uh, organic radiochemicals uh, are uh, utilized for this purpose and uh, gamma camera uh, like devices like gamma camera can be utilized to detect radiation emitted from the organs and can view organs from many different angles actually. Uh, images can be enhanced by computer and view, uh, can be viewed by physicians to detect blockages or other dysfunctional activity. Uh, it could be utilized to evaluate heart diseases like for example, a radioisotope could be injected into the patient's blood stream while he or she is exercising like 32 people could be uh, injected say on a he is working on a treadmill and the radioisotope travels towards the heart and allows the doctors to follow uh, it on the screen. So, while looking at image doctors can check for reduced blood flow through arteries a signal of heart disease. Uh, positron emission tomography like we are talking about is a very precise technique and uh, it could be utilized for different applications like in oncology, in cardiac and brain imaging. A combination of PET with CT scan or computer tomography scans uh, uh, can be a very useful and could give a better detection or diagnosis. Then there is a field of radiotherapy. So, radiotherapy uh, could be utilized to cure many uh, diseases like say for example, rapidly dividing cells are sensitive to damage by radiation. Now, cancerous growth can be controlled or eliminated by irradiating the areas containing the growth uh, precisely. It could be external irradiation uh, where uh, it is given uh, externally or it could be internal radiotherapy where you administer or plant a small radio radiation source uh, in the target area. So, this could be lot of different kinds of uh, uh, methods could be utilized in here. Uh, there is boron neutron capture therapy where boron 10 which concentrates in malignant brain tumors could be utilized. Patients irradi irradiated with thermal neutrons uh, which are strongly absorbed by the boron and producing high energy alpha particles which can kill cancers. So, there are a lot of different ways you can uh, one can or uh, the medical people can utilize this uh, radioisotopes. Radioisotopes can be utilized in another uh, field that is pharmacological studies. Uh, for development of new drugs whether it has a desirable effect for clinical applications or say you want to uh, locate the site of accumulation. Uh, you want to know the rate of accumulation or rate of metabolism uh, uh, and metabolic products can be determined using radioisotopes. In each of these studies radio tracers will be utilized. Uh, say uh, you can have autoradiography on whole section of an experimental animal and in yield information on site and rate of accumulation. So, in pharmacological science uh, studies uh, say accumulation of drugs could be seen or other analytes could be seen. So, uh, diagnostics radio pharmaceuticals is used to examine blood flow to brain, functioning of the liver, lungs, heart or kidney to assess the bone growth to predict the effect of surgery and a lot of other things. Uh, a number of chemicals could be identified which are absorbed to specific organs like for example, thyroid takes up iodine, brain consumes glucose. So, likewise. Uh, which chemicals or which substances accumulate where it could be found out. 
So, with this knowledge radio pharmacists are able to attach uh, various radioisotopes to biologically active substances which could be used uh, for different applications. Radioactive form of these substances after entering the body uh, they are incorporated into biological processes and they will be excre excreted in the usual way. So, uh, there are a lot of a lot of examples of these isotopes. Uh, now, like uh, this uh, like you can use gamma ray emitting isotopes or you can use beta like we have used 32 p or I, uh, iodine 131 these could be used for lot of different applications. There is uh, one called urea breath test, it is used to detect the presence of uh, the bacteria helicobacter pylori in the stomach and this bacteria causes inflammation, ulcers and atrophy of the stomach. So, patient given with certain amount of urea they will contain carbon that is 14 C. Now, if helicobacter is there in stomach urea will be broken down to carbon dioxide and it is released and exhaled by the patient which could be collected in a balloon and then detected uh, for the presence of the bacteria. Uh, radio uh, therapeutic radio pharmaceuticals is another field where radioisotopes could be used like for example, to destroy or uh, malfunctioning cells using radiation. Radioisotopes generating the radiation can be localized in the required organ through a radioactive element following its usual biological path. Uh, for example, I 131 we have seen could be utilized for treatment of cancer of thyroid uh, and there are other examples like for example, boron 11 for metabolism and brain tumor treatment. So, these were applications for the in the field of medical and pharmaceutical science. There are uh, certainly uh, there are other applications like for example, radioisotopes could be utilized in industrial field also. Like for example, many types of thickness gauges exploit the fact that rays are attenuated when they pass through material. So, by measuring the number of rays the thickness can be determined and this process have several industrial applications. For example, in automobile industry to test steel quality in the manufacture of cars and obtain the proper thickness of tin and aluminum in aircraft industry to check for uh, faults in jet engines uh, construction. Uh, industry like for example, to gauge the density of road surfaces and substances and pipeline companies to test the strength of welds and other. So, their uh, radioisotopes can uh, very well be used in industrial applications also. Uh, uh, like uh, there is uh, another industrial application could be cable manufacturers they to check uh, cables for cracks and other things. So, these are like a few applications of in industry. Now, not only in industry like I said they could be used in art and humanity also. Uh, neutron activation analysis is useful in identifying the chemical elements present in say coins, pottery and other artifacts from the past. A tiny unnoticeable fleck of paint from an art treasure or a microscopic grain of pottery is su uh, sufficient to reveal its chemical makeup and this could be utilized uh, say uh, work of famous painters that can be fingerprinted and could be uh, detected uh, you can detect the work of forgers also. So, this so radioisotopes if you as we have gone through has applications in many areas like from right from biological sciences or biotechnology to agricultural sciences. Uh, to medical sciences, in pharmaceutical industry, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, normal other industries and even in art and humanity. So, radioisotopes have wide applications and uh, uh, it is like uh, it is being utilized for many different uh, uh, being utilized in many different areas uh, of science and otherwise. Now, Although it has lot of applications, but radio isotopes or radioactivity is, uh, is a dangerous thing, it is not uh, safe unless it is properly utilized. So, there are lot of safety aspects are related to this. So, when you have to utilize it, you have to take permissions, uh, due care and precautions has to be taken 
and uh, in this section we are going to discuss those safety aspects involved with the use of radioactivity. Now, radioactivity is a natural phenomenon and natural sources of radiation are features of the environment, they are present all over uh, in different forms actually. Now, radiation and radioactive substances have many beneficial applications like we have seen ranging from power generation through nuclear plants to use in biological sciences in field of medicine, in field of industry, agriculture and likewise. Now, the radiation risk for uh, to workers, to public and to the environment that may arise from these applications has to be assessed and if necessary has to be controlled. So, that is a very important part of radioisotope technique. So, therefore, some of the activities mentioned uh, like which I am mentioning here are subject to standards of safety. For example, medicinal use of radiation, one has to take care that how much doses has to be given, whether they are safe or not. Uh, then operating operation of nuclear installation, where they are localized, uh, like are they close to community, what are the safety precautions being taken to operate them. And then production and transport and use of radioactive material, then very important part is management of radioactive waste, which is generated after its use. The, so, it has to be properly disposed, uh, so that it will not cause any harmful effects. Now, greatest disadvantage of using radioisotope is their toxicity and they are toxic because they produce ionizing radiations. So, when absorbed radiation causes ionization and free radicals uh, that will interact with the cells and uh, different parts of the cells macromolecules and which could cause mutation uh, in DNA uh, by affecting or altering the DNA and could hydrolyze proteins. Now, these uh, can damage and mole, uh, any molecule by ionization and may be damaged to DNA for certain extent could be repaired, but not all the time. Many times the DNA damage is uh, not repaired and it could lead to mutations and which could be deleterious also. Uh, like for example, uh, mutation can lead to the formation of tumor and this has happened in many cases. Uh, so, uh, for uh, one example, when we are utilizing these radioisotopes in uh, labs, in biotechnology labs, there are certain or any biological lab, there are certain good lab practices for safe use of radioisotopes and I would like to discuss some of them in here. Now, good lab practices is a must for anybody who is going to use these radioisotopes uh, in uh, any part or anywhere. Uh, or for any application. The first part is one has to become fully conversant with radiation protection by reading lot of literature like reading regulations for the safe handling and uh, use of radioisotopes. Uh, there are a lot of publications like code of practices to use radioisotopes and other publications which are uh, published by uh, competent authorities. Uh, so, those needs to be read thoroughly and understood thoroughly to uh, before uh, going on to use the radioisotope, uh, radioisotopes for your research or other works. Second thing to be done is one needs to obtain a license from the department of energy or department of uh, uh, environment. Uh, like for example, in India you have to uh, obtain a, a license from uh, Bhabha Atomic Research Center or BARC uh, and other agencies. And uh, so, uh, second part is that before you are utilizing radioisotope technique, you need to get the proper permissions, you need to obtain license and they will be monitoring uh, your area of uh, research, where you are going to work and all different aspects. So, that a safe utilization of radioisotopes could be performed. Then when you are using it after you have done these first two things, then there are certain norms to be followed. Like proper training has to be uh, taken and when you are utilizing radio isotopes in the lab, first thing is protective clothing that you have to protect yourself. In protective clothing, you have to wear uh, gloves which could be protective protects uh, uh, so that you do not come in direct contact through your hands 
there could be double gloves could be uh, could be worn there should be full length lab coat should be used and closed toed shoes like uh, completely closed shoes has to be utilized and then safety glasses for protection of your eyes so you have to protect yourself your sensitive areas like skin eyes and other um, like uh, you have to protect them through protective clothing uh, second thing is mouth pipetting needs to be avoided completely you will not mouth pipette a radioisotope solution so what you have to do you, you have to use automated pipettes for this purpose there should not be any food and drinks in vicinity where you are utilizing radioisotopes or you are storing radioisotopes food and drinks has to be kept at a safer distance from uh, where your uh, area of uh, uh, area is where you are utilizing radioisotopes or where you are uh, storing like for example if you are storing at certain place food and drinks has to be kept away from that place uh, storage of radioisotopes is another important area you will not leave radioactive material un unsecured and unattended uh, only when you are present there you need uh, you will be utilizing those radioisotopes and otherwise you will lock and secure those radioisotopes in safe place. So, this is a very important part and one has to really pay attention to this. Uh, many times it might happen that you might spill radioisotopes while using them and so spillages are another important problem. So, all spillages uh, like which uh, are maybe on the floor or your working area or on your skin or clothing should be attended immediately and uh, due uh, care should be taken and uh, uh, it should be problem should be solved here. Uh, so, uh, spillages should be avoided and but if it is spillages occur or you have spilled the radioisotope you should clean it up and uh, proper uh, guidances or directions needs to be followed here. Uh, all the labs which are utilizing radioisotopes has to use proper signs and labels. So, any container equipment room contaminated area with radioactivity should be labeled with proper signs as radioactive it is a like it should show that it is a dangerous thing and one has to be careful not to go near it unless somebody needs to use it and that too with protective clothing and all other precautions. I will show you the signs what are used like some of those then there should be like radioisotopes uh, should be used in bio uh, safety cabinets or fume hoods. Uh, there is a term called ALARA A L A R A which is like uh, here uh, ALARA that is keeping radiation exposure to as low as reasonably achievable that is what it means. Uh, so, one has to take all the precautions uh, to follow all the guidelines, guidelines to keep uh, radiation as low as reasonably achievable. So, what one has to do take all precautions to keep, keep radiation exposure as low as possible wear radiation monitor badges and get them checked regularly for radiation exposure we will discuss it little in a little while. Uh, check yourself your clothing area of work after radioisotope work is done and this could be done by like GM counters uh, routinely even if it is spills have taken place you can use GM counters to detect that uh, and uh, uh, this is a very important part of safety uh, in radio activity use. So, these are some of the uh, things now uh, if you can see these symbols here this is like it shows ionizing radiation hazard symbol uh, which could be pasted on the areas where work is going on on the uh, labs doors of the labs which are utilizing radioisotope technique. There is another one which is uh, radioactivity danger logo which could be also pasted at the areas where radioisotopes are being used. So, these are two signs this one and another one and there are other signs also which needs to be pasted and uh, uh, a proper uh, like uh, dangerous signs has to be uh, people has to be alerted for uh, these uh, where radioactivity is being used. Now, the uh, if like little bit into what happens when a uh, certain amount of radiation somebody is exposed to and what are different parameters uh, which are important in here. 
Now, the toxicity of radiation will be dependent on uh, if somebody is really exposed or uh, comes in close contacts. It will depend on first is the amount present that is amount of radioisotope or radioactivity present, then amount absorbed by the body and energy of the absorbed radiation and its biological effect all these things needs to be assessed. So, therefore, a series of additional uh, units and other ways have been devised uh, to uh, assess this uh, radiation hazard can be measured in terms of exposure uh, that is a quantity expressing the amounts of ionization in air and there are a lot of different ways uh, which could be done we are not going into details of that. Uh, one has to monitor and control exposure radiation has always been present in the environment and in our bodies the hum human body cannot sense ionization ionizing radiation, but a range of instruments that are capable of detecting very low levels of radiation from natural and main uh, source exist and they should be utilized. Uh, like for example, there are dosimeters which are widely utilized. Now, dosimeters are available to measure the absolute dose over a period of time. If you know we were talking about the badges needs to be, uh, to be uh, put on your clothes or in close vicinity where it could be uh, the amount of exposure could be uh, checked. So, dosimeters are available for that and they could uh, measure the absolute dose over a period of time. There could be ion chamber dosimeters uh, and they resemble like pens and can be clipped to one's clothing and must be periodically recharged and the result should be logged. There could be film batch dosimeters and they enclose a piece of photographic film and this film becomes exposed as the radiation pass through it. So, they must be developed in photographic emulsion uh, as photographic emulsion. So, the exposure can be counted and locked. So, once developed they will be they are discarded. Uh, there could be thermoluminescent dosimeters which contains crystals that emit visible light when heated and they could be utilized again for uh, uh, logging and to record amount of exposure. Uh, there are a lot of other like Geiger counters or scintillation counters could be used for to uh, measure these things radiation. Uh, now, another important part is how to limit the exposure uh, that is radiation protection. Now, this is also known as radiological protection and it is the protection of people and the environment from the harmful effects of ionizing radiation which include both particle radiation at high energy electromagnetic radiation. Now, radiation protection can be divided into one occupational radiation protection like protection of workers and then medical radiation protection that is protection of patients and the radiographer. Then there is public radiation protection like for example, protection of individual members of the public and the population as a whole. For example, if there is a nuclear plant then that comes under public radiation protection. Uh, radiation exposure can be managed by a combination of three factors that control the amount of or, or dose of radiation received from a source. For example, one is the first factor is time, the amount of radiation exposure increases and decreases with the time people spend near the source of radiation. Now, reducing the time of exposure will reduce the effective uh, close proportionality. So, if you are uh, if you are uh, exposed if you are near the radiation source for lesser time you will be exposed less proportionately less. Then distance that, that is very important that farther away people are. So, one needs to be as away from a radiation source as possible and that will also result into the less exposure. Uh, uh, also the energy of the uh, radiation will uh, determine uh, whether uh, if you are at a particular particular distance, so that your exposure is less. For example, there are we have discussed about the beta particles with different energy labels, uh, gamma rays which are highly energetic and alpha rays which are not so they are energetic, but not so penetrating. Now, third factor is shielding which is very important to protect people. Now, greater the shielding around a radiation source the smaller is the exposure. So, biological shield refers to a mass of absorbing material placed around a reactor or other radioactive source to reduce the radiation to a label safer to humans. 
Now, effective for mater uh, if material as a shield is related to its cross section for scattering and absorption proportional to the total mass of material per unit area interposed along the line of sight between the radiation source and the region to be protected. There could be different radiations like I said alpha radiation a thin piece of light material could be utilized like, such as paper or even the dead cells in the outer layer of the human skin are adequate for shielding as these are not penetrating. So, but if alpha uh, source is present inside the body then uh, it, uh, there is no protection uh, because uh, the cells could be exposed to these. Uh, particles. So, if these are inhaled or ingested then they could be dangerous. Uh, beta particles like I said they could be of different energy and they could be uh, uh, covered or they could be, uh, be avoided uh, by heavy clothing uh, and like uh, for example, materials of 5 millimeter of aluminum could be uh, good enough to attenuate these rays. Uh, gamma rays uh, are highly penetrating, so you require thick dense shielding such as lead is necessary to protect against gamma rays and higher the energy of the gamma rays thicker the lead must be. Likewise, x-rays uh, the exposure to x-rays could be also uh, uh, could be also uh, shielding could be utilized proper shielding could be utilized for that also. Now, so when you are handling the radioisotopes the rule is to minimize the distance between yourself and the source, minimize the time of exposure and maintain the shielding at all times. Uh, management of radiation protection is similar in many countries uh, and there are like I said there are a lot of regulations, there are a lot of publications which should be one should be conversant with and proper licensing and proper precautions need, need to be taken uh, to use these uh, radioisotopes or the radioactivity. Uh, so, this is a uh, 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 little bit about the safety aspects which needs to be taken care of while using radioisotope technique. So, uh, this completes our section on radioisotope technique and we have gone through the basic concepts of radioisotope technique where we have learnt about uh, different types of radioactive decay. Uh, the interaction of those particles with the matter, uh, different types of detection and quantification method, uh, particular three methods. Uh, then we have learnt about uh, radio immunoassay very much used in research and clinical practices and we have learnt about the various applications of the radioisotope technique and particularly the safety aspects which are very important uh, for uh, uh, public at large. Uh, and for researchers, uh, medical science people to be protected from the radioisotope, uh, radioisotopes while using them for lot of different applications. Uh, in coming lectures, we are going to start a new topic that is chromatography and uh, how macromolecules and other uh, important constituents are purified, we are going to discuss that in coming lectures. Thank you.